I'm out, come out wherever you are. Welcome once again, my fellow manipulators of digital fate. I'm Richie, this is Capricorn. Today's deck is one that's just absolutely bonkers. So we're taking the ideas we've been pursuing with Cloak the last few days, we're turning them up to 11, we're using the absolute best Cloak cards in the format, and we're cheating things into play that we should absolutely not be cheating into play. This deck is called Hide and Seek, and for good reason. We're cloaking huge permanents into play, we're using those flicker cards, things like Portal to Phyrexia, things like Atraxa, and there's a couple of spicy additions that I'll wait until we break down the deck to get into, but we are getting things into play quicker than most reanimator decks, guys, and it's, it's just crazy how much value we can get off these cards, and our opponent just doesn't see it coming. And what's great is, even when we kinda whiff, you know, and we don't get to combo off the way we want, we're still putting so much value onto the field in the form of cloaked creatures that you never really whiff with the deck. You're either doing well or you're doing insanely well and popping off and just causing your opponent to want to scoop on, on the spot. So I'm kind of loving the deck. Uh, before we break it down, I want to give a huge shout out to my patrons over at patreon.com slash quarantined Capricorn. That's Yuck Fuzi, Kaylin, and Hector at the Brew Crew Elite tier. Uh, Marlac at the Brew Crew tier, and then of course our forever CPU savior, Terence Rohrbach. You guys are the lifeblood of everything that I'm doing. Thank you so much for your contribution. Also, I want to give a shout out to uh, everyone over on Twitch. Twitch has been super supportive lately. If you want to get into, uh, you know, watching live on, on Twitch and getting a, a look behind the curtain, so to speak, definitely check me out on Twitch. That's twitch.tv slash quarantined Capricorn. Uh, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe. We're on our way to 6,000. We're well on our way. I think we're already halfway from 5K subs to 6K subs. And the channel's just snowballing and gaining a lot of traction. So if you're someone that's new to the channel, let me know in a comment below. Let me know how you found me. I'd be very interested to find out how you're finding my videos. If you're someone that's been here for a while, also let me know in a comment down below that you've been here for a while because uh, I'm really interested to see like who's an OG, who's new, uh, and why does anyone care about watching my channel? Uh, I'm really interested in that so I can bring even better content to you in the future. But like I said before, catch me live over on Twitch every Monday through Friday. That's twitch.tv slash quarantined Capricorn because if I'm alive and I'm breathing, I'm there and I'm streaming. Let's break down this deck. I guess I just can't get enough of Cloak. Uh, this deck takes it to the limit by trying to abuse the best Cloak cards in the most abusive ways possible. So. The idea here is we're running Cryptic Coat, Vanifar, and Hide in Plain Sight, all four of the best cloak cards. And then we have ways to flicker the things that we're cloaking so that they come back into play as their normal card, their normal self. Um, and so we're running an equal amount of these best cloak cards and then flicker effects and then just really insane, over-the-top, expensive permanents that are going to get us insane value if we can cheat them into play. So, each of the three different Cloak cards has its strengths and its weaknesses. First of all, Cryptic Coat is only three mana. It's the only one that's just three mana, so it can always come out on turn three, uh, whether we have any ramp or not. And then it also has uh, repeated value in that if you're out of gas, you can pay two mana, return it to your hand, recast it for three, cloak something else from the top. The downside is you don't get any selection. It's going to hit whatever's on the top, and whatever it is, is whatever it is. The other end of the spectrum, we have Hide in Plain Sight, which is basically a better collected company. Uh, okay, better's not the right word, but under the right circumstances, those circumstances being this deck, it's a better collected company. So four mana sorcery, look at the top five cards, and then choose two of them to cloak and put the rest on the bottom. So this gives us some selection. As long as we have something insanely powerful and expensive to hit in the top five, that can be one of the two. The other card can just be whatever is the best value for us. And then we can very easily flicker that huge threat 
let it come onto the battlefield and just take over the game like way earlier <laughs> than we should be getting a card like that out. And we'll get to what cards we're actually flickering in a little bit. Uh, the middle of the road here is Vanifar, Evolve Ni Enigma. Now, Vanifar is another 4-drop, so it's not coming down early like the coat would. And it's not cloaking two things at once like Hide in Plain Sight, and it doesn't get to look at the top five like Hide in Plain Sight. But what it does get to do, two very important things. One, we get to choose any card in our hand and cloak it. So, if, if the thing that we want, the really big permanent that we want to cloak and get into play to try to cheat into play, uh, is in our hand, this lets us choose it no matter what. Uh, whereas the Hide in Plain Sight chooses from the top five depending on the situation each of these can be better obviously hide and play in sight is going to be better in the later game when you're out of gas and you don't have anything in your hand to cloak vanifar is going to be a little bit better on curve because you probably have a big thing still in your hand that you can immediately cloak onto the field and then even if they take out the vanifar after that uh you still have the cloaked thing on the field ready to flicker and take over the game so not, not to mention you can reuse this every single turn because it triggers once a turn at the beginning of combat on your turn. So that can get pretty wild. Uh, so what are we flickering? Three portal to Phyrexia. Because not only will this come into play, make them sack three creatures, it can bring back creatures from the graveyard. So if they deal with our Vanifar early on, we can just bring it back with our portal and then just keep doing even more shenanigans, which is crazy. But we can also bring back their creatures. We can also bring back some of the other big hits that we have in this deck. Atraxa Grand Unifier. We have two copies here. 7-7 seven, seven Flying Vigilance Death Touch Lifelink. This is not a new card. You know this card. You've lost to this card. But now, we can cloak it onto the field as a 2-2 Ward 2, which means it has increased chance of surviving until we can flicker it. And then we just flicker it, it comes back into play as its normal self. It gets us a card of each type off, off the top, uh, top I believe it's 10 cards of the deck. And then, you know, it sits there. So all of our flicker spells can just keep flickering it and keep getting value. That's what what's great about all of these big targets is not only are we cloaking them onto the field and then flickering them to get them on the battlefield way earlier than we should by getting around their organic mana costs but then there are things with great etbs that you know can sit there and just be flickered in the future as we draw into more flicker spells so super super good we've also got two copies of jinja taxius progress tyrant because it's just insane if we can get this out quick enough and counter their first artifact instant or sorcery spell every turn that buys us so much time they have to save up cards and uh, get to enough mana on the field to play two things in a turn so that they can push through their thing being uh, Countered just so that they can deal with this threat and I feel like by the time they can do that uh, A few turns have gone by and we have even more value accrued on the field to the point where it doesn't even matter if they deal with our gin anymore Which is nuts, but if this even just sticks on the field for one turn cycle it's going to double our stuff that we play. So when we play Cryptic Coat after we have Jin out, we're going to get to make a copy of the Cryptic Coat that's going to hit another thing. When we play Hide in Plain Sight, we get two Hide in Plain Sights. We get to cloak two from the top five and then cloak two from the top five again. Uh, it just gets kind of insane with Jinja Taxius, so absolutely need to run it. And then we're also running one Eternal Wanderer, and this is sort of something that we can cloak and cheat into play. But it's also an enabler, because for plus one, we can exile an artifact or creature and then return it to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of that player's next end step. So this is reusable flicker effect uh, for just plus one loyalty, but it also gives us the ability to you know, use the zero loyalty ability to make a 2-2 double striker or minus four to mostly, uh, to mostly uh, you know, clear the whole board, wipe the whole board. Um, and we get some versatility there. So it's a cool card in that we can get value off cloaking it early and flickering it into play before it should be in play, but it also then enables even more of our flickering shenanigans, which, which is really nice. Uh, in the same way, we've got two mysterious limousines, because cloaking this and then cheating it into play by flickering it 
isn't going to get us nearly as much value as the other hits, but it's still a really good line. And then when it does come into play, it's another way for us to flicker our own things. The Mysterious Limousine can come into play. It can exile one of our 2-2 Ward 2, uh, you know, face down creatures. And then when it attacks, it can exile their best thing and return that thing that we exiled first to the battlefield, except it will come back as its full size. So if we have a Portal to Phyrexia down cloaked from a Vanifar or whatever, and then we play Mysterious Limousine and we exile that cloaked creature, well now, <laughs> bets are all off, right? If they destroy the Limousine, Portal comes into play, they have to sack three creatures, and then we have a recursion engine. If they don't destroy the Limousine, we swing with it next turn, we eat their best thing, and we still get Portal, which makes them sack three things, uh, and then gets back a creature every turn. So, Mysterious Limousine, super awesome in this deck. Running two because it fits very nicely into something we can cloak that we get some extra value off cloaking, but also another way to flicker our, our own cloaked things, which is really nice. It's also worth noting that the Cryptic Code itself, since it's an artifact, can be flickered by a lot of our flicker spells, so... Even if we don't have something really good that we hit and cloaked that we want to flicker, we can always just flicker the cryptic code itself and try again, which is really nice. Uh, let's talk about the, the flicker spells that we're running. We already talked about one Eternal Wanderer, two Mysterious Limousines, and those are kind of our mid to late sort of flicker abilities that we get to a little bit later in the game. But the things that we're trying to play to flicker ASAP, we've got four Touch the Spirit Realm, which we can channel this for two mana, uh, exile an artifact or creature, return it to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. So this is a way for us to do it and not even have it be countered, right? Because channeling doesn't count as casting a spell, it's discarding a card. So this is a nice uncounterable way to flicker something, and sometimes we need that about, uh, against control, and it's only two mana. And then it's also, uh, you know, plan B, it can be removal. Three mana, play it as the enchantment, exile their biggest threat, give us, you know, some breathing room so we can get to turn our engines on. Uh, so it's multi-use and it's really good. We've also got three Twining Twins because Swift Spiral uh, at instant speed for two mana is another two mana way for us to exile one of those uh, cloaked creatures and bring it back into play as whatever's on the big side. Um, but then it's also extra value in that it's a 4-4 fly Flying Vigilance Ward 1 for 4 that's just sitting in exile waiting to be played later. So some nice extra value, you know, if, if, our, if our opponent is matching us card for card and it's a really close game, sometimes being able to play another 4-4 Evasive Threat uh, can be enough to seal the game. So having that tacked on is really nice. And then we've got 3 Abuelo. And Abuelo is a little bit slower. It comes down for 3 mana as a 2-2 Flying Ward 2. And then it has this 3 mana ability that can exile any creature or artifact and then return it at the beginning of the next end step. So it's a reusable flicker effect. It's It costs 1 more mana than our 2 mana flicker spells. And we have to pay the 3 mana to play Abuelo to begin with. But once we have them down, we can just do it every turn, right? Sometimes multiple t times a turn. And not only can we flicker our stuff into play and cheat it into play, but we can use that flicker effect to then at instant speed save some of our stuff from removal, removal potentially. Since the thing doesn't come back until the beginning of the next end step, we can dodge sweepers. We can do a lot of work with Abuelo. Um, the last card I want to talk about, Tunnel Tipster. Now, I thought long and hard about what card to include here. We really wanted a 2-drop that we would consistently hit on turn 2 and want to curve out with, and Ramp seemed to make the most sense, so that if we don't have Cryptic Code, if we have the Vanifar or the Hide in Plain Sight, both being 4-drop, being able to cast those on turn 3 so that we can combo out a turn quicker seemed really relevant, so I was pretty sure we wanted to Ramp in some way with a Mana Dork. Um, and I was hesitant to use Tunnel Tipster itself at first because it doesn't seem like super good. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized like we don't really need to worry about fixing our, our colors, our mana color that much. And this just gets extra value as it sits on the field because every time a face down creature enters the battlefield on our turn, at the end of our turn we get to put a, a plus one plus one counter on Tunnel Tipster. So if we're cloaking things and our opponent's dealing with those threats and we're cloaking things and our opponent's dealing with it and we're cloaking things and they're dealing with it, uh, all the while, 
This unassuming tunnel tipster is just sitting over there, helping us ramp out those spells and getting bigger every turn. And then before you know it, they're out of answers. They've dealt with all of our big cloak things, but the tunnel tipster is still sitting there as a 4-4 or a 5-5 and can sometimes just close out the game by itself, or maybe alongside playing that Twining Twins as the creature like we talked about. So I think Tunnel Tipster actually deserves a spot in the deck. I'm not 100% sure it is the end-all, be-all choice for this, you know, two-drop, two-mana on-curve on turn two play. Um, but you could definitely do a lot worse. And it's put in some work, and it's done some really cool things in the game, so... Uh, I definitely think it's worth at least trying and it's worth the inclusion and so far it's been awesome. So that's pretty much the deck. A couple things I want to I wanna point out is almost everything in the deck whenever possible is a permanent. So even our flicker spells, there are some other flicker spells that are instants and sorceries that we didn't run. We chose to run the Touch the Spirit Realm, the Twining Twins, they're tacked on to permanents, right? Even Abuelo, our flicker machine, is a permanent. You know, all of these things are permanent. It's Vanifar, Cryptic Coat. The only thing that isn't a permanent is Hide in Plain Sight. And the reason that that is good is because sometimes, obviously we want to hit our big bomby things when we're cloaking stuff, but sometimes we're not going to do that, right? Sometimes we're just going to have to take the best of what's offered to us if it's, you know, a Hide in Plain Sight or just take the best card in our hand that might not be one of the bombs or just something random with the Cryptic Coat. And because most of the cards in the deck are permanents, there's a little bit of extra, you know, gravy, a little bit of extra value tacked in where if we happen to play a Cryptic Coat and say we hit a Touch the Spirit Realm, right, and that comes in cloaked as a 2-2 Ward 2, at least it's something. At least if we get desperate, they play a Shieldred, we're down to 7 life, we need to deal with it. We can always use our Flicker effect to then Flicker that Touch the Spirit Realm, comes back into play as removal, and then exiles the shielded, right? It opens up our options. The more things in the deck that we can devote to permanence, uh, the better chance we have of, even if it's not the thing we want to be cloaking and want to be hitting, it still has some value baked in, and that if we do hit it, it sits there as a 2-2 ward 2, and under the right circumstances, if the best play is to flicker that thing, if we just need to get in for 4 in the air and we can win, if we need to exile a particular threat, whatever the case may be, the option is there for us. Uh, and I kind of love that. So. That's why most everything in this deck is permanence. Obviously, Hide in Plain Sight is just too good not to play, so that's a sorcery. But the deck is just nutty. Honestly, you can do some really crazy things really early. It might even be faster than Reanimator decks. Um, and it, it's just it's just crazy. We've got four Sparas Headquarters, four Dream Root Cascade, four Farmlands, one Brushland, four Sea Chrome Coast, two Attaker Waste, one Beside You, one Ottawara, one Iganjo, one Plains, and just one Plaza of Heroes, because we have just enough legendaries to kind of make it make it make sense as a one-off. Um, and that is a very, very careful balance of needing the right mana for three colors needing to make sure we have the greatest chance of our lands coming into play untapped as possible throughout the game so that we don't miss any of our key plays. Uh, and it, it's very tricky, but we get the job done. The games are super fun. Honestly, this is definitely a deck that I'm going to revisit in the future because it's just wild when it pops off. You have to see it. So I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to shut up and we're going to check out the games. All right, we're going to keep this. This should be fine. I wouldn't want you to. TKO 100. Nice. Nice. Alright. We're going to start with the farmland so that we can play Tunnel Tipster on 2. Follow it up with the Seachrome Coast. We're going big, boys. We're going real big. Look at how broken going first is. Look at how insanely broken going first is. We're going to cloak Ginny. Get a counter on the tipster. He's going to flash in a 2 2. Well, whoopee fucking do. Did you just match me? Yes. <laughs> that was you, Tommy. 
I was like, why did you fold against me? Good grief. Good grief. That's funny. We're gonna cloak a portal. Disgusting. You ready to see how disgusting this is gonna be? Ginja Taxis in play. Turn four. Let's go. That is so funny, Tommy. So we can actually flicker two things. So if we need to save a guy. We don't even need the portal right now. We don't care about killing this 3-3. And there's nothing to get back from the graveyard, so we're not gonna flicker anything. Do we even cloak a card? No. We'll just we'll just put a counter on something. Wandering Emperor, but you don't have the two. You don't have the ward. Oh, you're gonna exile Ginny. My judgment is final. Okay. Okay. We'll play Abuelo. Board's looking pretty wild. Board's looking pretty wild. I have got new moves to teach you. Thank you. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, we'll close the card from our hand, thank you. Uh, we'll swing in with the flyer. I guess that's all we need to do, right? <laughs> Try not to miss me. Guess we'll just do this. That seems fine. That seems fine and fair. Right? Good and fair. Good and fair. Fair magic the gathering. Who needs their creatures anyway? Right? got five mana, he's down to two cards and a virtue of loyalty. Soakins in, get me to 16. 15. I'll take your novice inspector, thank you. Hmm. 
cloak the Vanifar. We'll just swing with our flyers. And then we'll Abuelo. Because why not? Oh my god, this is so gross. Get rid of all your guys. Pass. Holy shimoli. Ow. That was rude. Virtue of loyalty. Make another dude. I'll go to 13. I mean, you're not you're not getting through all of this, right? Let's uh, let's draw a card. Cause why not? I guess we just go for it at this point, right? Okay, he's gonna scoop. Got the job done. This looks great. We don't have any of our cloak cards, but we have time to draw into them. We've got tunneled hipsters. I feel good about it. We're gonna start with Spar's headquarters. I'm just that scary. I hope not. We just need something nasty to cloak. So next turn we could either play a 4 drop, like Twining Twins, which would be kind of wasteful. Or we could just play another Tunnel Tipster and get to 6 mana on turn 4. Tricky, man. Very tricky. I think we do the other Tunnel Twister. Pass the turn. Maybe we block and flicker just to take less damage. It's got Trample, though, so I don't know if that's even worth it. It's not worth it to prevent one damage. Yeah, I'm not going to bother. I guess we will just... It sucks that I can't crew this. But I'm gonna do it anyway. We'll hit Yana. No attacks. If we had one more mana and we were able to actually crew it with the Tunnel Tipsters... It would have been a lot better. Alright. We're gonna hard cast Jin. We could swing and eat something, but then he gets back the Yenna, so. We're just gonna end the turn. for six. Well, we're just gonna have to do that, I guess. I think it's okay, though. I think we'll be okay. Alright, hide in plain sight. Jeez Louise. Uh, a limousine 
and an abuelo. So we've got four mana. Let me think. I could swing. Grab that, give you back the Yenna. And then I could flicker that. Retake the Yenna. All right, let's let's do this. Swing. Exile you. Give you back to Yenna. Then. Would you like to trade? You can trade if you want to. Next to damage. Swift Spiral, this guy, end the turn, Tunnel Tipsters get counters, Death comes back, eats the Yenna, and pass. And now we can crew the limousine with one Tipster to block if we want to. That seems pretty good. Deck's not coming out till probably... Wednesday. It might come out tomorrow. Uh, we'll keep this. We've got no white, but we have two hide in plain sights after a tunnel tipster. And that's just gross. Man, hide in plain sight is so good. There's gotta be another deck we can brew around that card. Tunnel Tipster. You think you have broken Mono Green in Historic. I believe it. Oh god, we're playing against Roots, guys. We are playing against Roots. I will take an Eternal Wanderer. And I will take a Touch Spirit. Oh, it's getting wild. Right, another hide in plain sight. This time we'll get uh, a portal and an abuelo. Play the coast. No creatures to hit. What about Nars? No creatures to hit. So we can just swing. Tipsters 3-3. Three, three. Now all we need is a flicker spell to flicker, flicker this portal to Phyrexia. But we've got a sixth land next turn, so... I think the only problem is we're missing white. No, we've got the white. Alright, this is going to be really gross. 
You ready? Swing two in the air because why not? Uh, end of turn, portal comes down. Says, hey, sack three creatures. Now, he could make another plant at instant speed, right? No, he doesn't have a creature to exile. So he can't even make a plant. Okay. That works, though. Bounces Shieldred. He still gets set way back on the board. Yeah, this is wild, Chunky. Returning things. I feel like it's going to be too slow. Hopefully. Would you like your thing back? Yes, yes you would. Yeah, we just flicker portal to Phyrexia every turn with a Buelo. Uh, this is too slow. You can't wait until turn three to play a Tunnel Tipster. That's not gonna work. Uh, this we will keep. We will put back... Cryptic Code on 3. Hide in Plain Sight on 4. We're going to put back Touch the Spirit Realm. We've got three chances here to hit something. Something good. Let's see what we can do. Turn three, coat. Turn four, hide in plain sight. Alright, we got a Ginger Taxis. That's brutal, man. Oh, he killed it! You jerk. Alright, we'll hide in plain sight. We'll get a portal. And an Atraxa. Sure. Let's go, baby. Scoops! Wait, how many? Let's rock! What just happened? Is that another 10 gods? Gods Unwanted gifted another 10 subs? Let's rock! Holy fucking shamoli. Well, if you guys are still in chat, spam it. Spam that celebration to gods. I'm supposed to be playing right now. I don't even care. Hold on a second. That's 20 gifted subs today from God's Unwanted Child. What an absolute real one. Oh, wait. That's... Is that 30 subs? Dude, I can't even keep track. We've got one to DKXLVBA, one to Nisik HS, Sean7S, Lady Angelouve, The Nerdy Steve, Augusec84, DM Viper, Jaffer got one. We love Jaffer. Absorbing Tax, Manuel Pelosi. Good God, man. That's what? 20. 
20 from you just this week, and then we had 10 from you last week, if I'm not mistaken, God's Unwanted Child. Thank you so much. Wow. What a real one. Let's Holy shit. Coming in here single-handedly saving the day. Single-handedly funding the whole channel. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna keep this. We're gonna start with the Spara's headquarters, go into Atawara, and play the Tunnel Tipster. So, if we do top deck a 4 mana cloak thing by turn 3, we'll be able to play it on 3. Which will be really sick. <laughs> right striker. Wild. Alright, Warden of the Inner Sky. Right, we would love to top deck Vanifar here. No such luck. We do have a cryptic coat though. I think we'll go for it. No attacks. We hit a Vanifar off the cryptic coat. That's wild. This is about to get insane. <laughs> Are you ready? Are you guys ready? Oh, you're going to kill him with Case of the Gateway Express. Well, now we're one mana short. Now we're one mana short. No blocks. Let's see, we're gonna swing. <sighs> Do we just play another Cryptic Coat? I think maybe. We could have flickered the Vanna far, but I feel like that's a waste. I'd rather top deck the fourth land and just flip it if we can. Yeah, Striker's cat's tail got bitten, but it's going to be okay eventually. Uh, can't can't quite turn it face up yet, right? says I can, but no. I don't have the mana for it. Man. I don't really know what we should do here. I guess we swing with this. Get in for three. And then we just kind of have to do this. So that we have it as a blocker. Won't trigger until next turn, but it is what it is. Resolute reinforcements. Now we just need to get lucky and top deck another flicker spell. And then we'll be able to portal to Phyrexia or Gingitaxius or Eternal Wanderer and let them only keep a 1-1. One, one. We'll just do that. Take four. I think we probably need Eternal Wanderer more than anything. 
problem is, depending on what flicker spell we get, we'll, it'll only come back at end of turn. It'll be too late to use a loyalty ability. And that makes things tricky. Cloak a card. I guess we probably have to cloak the portal, right? No attacks. And then we swift spiral it. And then it comes back as portal. Make him, makes him sack three. We just need to survive one more turn. And we should be good. I don't know if we can. Put it all on the flyer, right? 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. That puts us at 1. When we block the Knight Errant. Oh, he didn't put it all on the flyer. Weird. So we go to 2. Grab Vanifar. Four lands. It's just not quite enough, is it? He's got five in the air coming. I guess we could play the Twining Twins. I mean, I guess it's possible to not die. We're going to cloak... Ginger Taxius, because if we chump block with it and it dies, we can get it back with the portal as Ginger Taxius. Yeah, I remember I had to do that with Neville the last week he was alive. We had taken him to the vet, and we had to, like, not with medicine, but we had to hydrate him. So we had to do that with water. Block the Twining Twins. We are so close. So close. What's going on, Flush? I think our best bet is the Twining Twins. Don't love it, though. I do not love it. here. Alright, next to combat, we're going to cloak the Eternal Wanderer. No attacks. And then we're going to play the Mysterious Limousine. <sighs> and I guess... Guess we have to just hit the warden. Mm. 
Man, so close. He just has too many creatures. Uh, only two lands, no white. Keep six. Let's see. Put the portal back so we have a better chance of hitting it with a cryptic coat. That seems fine to me. Start with the farmland. We'll go planes on two into a tunnel tipster. And then we can hide in plain sight on four. And then we have touch the spirit realm ready to go. That seems wonderful. We got this, guys. No blocks. Because you kill our tunnel tipster. He does not. Hide in plain sight. And a lightning helix. Day late and a dollar short, buddy. Eternal Wanderer? I guess it's still better to hit the creatures, right? No blocks. No worries at all. I'm gonna swing for four. End the turn. We're gonna stop after our opponent's second main. Plays an Adeline. Go to 15, get hit for four, go to 11. Alright, we're going to flicker the Eternal Wanderer. And then it comes back. Sick. Ends today. Let's see, we've got another Cryptic Coat. We've got a Twining Twins. You know, I probably should have just killed everything except the 1-1 one, one before I did that. Right? Unfortunately, should have done it before playing that. I would have had two creatures on the field right now instead of one. So that was a punt. That was 100% a punt. I got too excited. I got ahead of myself. Epicure. Go to nine. Lightning Helix, sure. Uh, we just have to stay alive at this point. It's not looking good. I think that one punt not having two creatures uh, might ruin it for us. Pass the turn. Seven. Let's see what else our opponent has. Nothing. Okay, we'll return cryptic code to our hand. Hello. We would like to play the game. Thank you. Great. 
play the Cryptic Coat, and then we do have a Flicker effect here. And a Traxa. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. I, I will take it. Alright, so our artifact will be portal. Our sorcery will be hide in plain sight. Our creature will be Ginny. And our land will be the plaza. Wonderful. We have six mana next turn. We could Eternal Wanderer and Flicker the Atraxa. Which would be kind of gross. Does he have enough burn to just finish me off? He's not going to be able to swing and finish me. Epicure. I go to two. He just needs two more creatures. Oh, so close. <laughs> he was going to be at one. Thanks so much for checking out my channel. I'd like to give a huge shout out to all of my patrons over at Patreon. Without you guys, this channel would not be possible. So honestly, thank you from the bottom of my heart for all of your contributions. If you haven't yet, like and subscribe. The more likes we get and the quicker we get them, the bigger this channel will grow and the faster it will grow. I'd love nothing more than this channel to become something very special for you guys, but it's entirely up to you how fast that happens. Also, if you'd like more deck text, that's somewhere over there and if you'd like to see what else the channel's been up to lately that's somewhere up that way also subscribe circle below do all the things